This section of the DVD is, is on closing. This is without question the most important part of the, the DVD, basically because everything else that leads, everything else that you're doing, the, the uh, contacting, qualifying, educating the customer, resolving concerns, all of that leads to a close. And just as the, 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 clo the contacting, we talked about it kind of, you know, the, the funnel that it funnels the person down to the close. This, I found that most salesmen that aren't, maybe aren't hitting their potential, they're, they've mastered all of these other things. They're a great educator. They're a great uh, contactor. They've learned how to, the, the art of, of engaging someone at the door. But they haven't figured out how to actually close the deal. And most of it is because it's, it's fear. Um, one of the major causes of fear in the world is, is getting rejected in some way. Uh, just hearing no. In fact, it's considered to be up there next to death and public speaking is the, one of the other greatest fears is just getting rejected. And you have to overcome that because there's a rule basically that says that it takes five no's to get a yes. You're going to hear a person say no at least five times before you get them to say yes to, the, to what you're saying. And most of the time, whenever you hear the word no, the rule is you put a K on front of that and then a W on the end of it and basically understand that they don't know enough yet and so it's your job to continue to educate and overcome those concerns. So just remember this, learn to embrace and enjoy the word no. Actually, not necessarily enjoy the word no, but it's something to where if you are only concerned about finding those, that person's, uh, what would his key concerns or key benefits, then every time you go to the door and you talk to them and they say, no, I don't think I'm interested, you don't even hear it. Because all you want to know is, why aren't you interested? And so as you continue to ask those questions and find the real concerns that we talked about in the last section. So basically, just understand that no's are going to happen. Uh, and that if they do say no, that it normally means they don't know enough. And in addition to this, this is very interesting as well. Over 80%, 20% of sales of are made before a person says no five times. So less than five no's. 20%, 80% of no's is given when, a, when the person has said no for over five times. And so if you want to, if you want to add 80% more sales, then get into the habit of, of hearing no but just recognizing that all it means is they don't know enough and you have to get better at educating the customer. But with that said, just to get into some closing, there's different types of principles that, that, uh, that come along with closing. And, and the first one is just assume. Assume the sale. Assumptive clothing, close, closing, <laughs> assumptive closing is that, that when you go into this, you're assuming the minute you knock on that door that they're getting it. And if you do that, your whole contact, all of that, do you live here? You, you, are you a decision maker? Do you have cable? You, you're basically qualifying that person to get a satellite dish because you're assuming they're going to get it anyway. And so if you go to the door and you're assuming from the very get-go that, 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 that they're going to buy, that is going to drive the way you sell. Now, another thing that's important is it's called silent closing. And really, in this is extremely important because what silent closing means is that when you ask a question, whatever that question is throughout, throughout your sales presentation, but especially when you ask them to make a buying decision, you, when you ask, you be quiet. You don't say anything more until you've heard the person out, until they answer. So even if you say, would you like to give this product a try? And you're just silent and wait for them to respond. The inexperienced salesman will go, do you want to give this a try? And then they start getting uncomfortable by the silence. And they go, because we got a really good deal, and they start to, they start to uh, fumble for words. And they get impatient, and they start to fear that they're going to, to lose. It's because they're not assuming that the person wants to buy. If you assume the person wants to buy, then silent closing becomes very easy. Because when you ask a question, you assume they're going to answer it in a, in a specific way. Or that they're going to tell you a concern that you already know. You're going to help, you're going to help them overcome and ask them to get it again. And so, assuming that they're going to get it, and then silent closing, having the confidence enough in the questions that you're asking, having confidence in the closes that you use, so that when you actually do ask them to get it, you just, you're quiet. It doesn't matter how long it takes. If I tell somebody, my installers are going to be here tomorrow and the next day, when are you normally home? 
and you just don't say anything. The first person who speaks loses. If you speak first, you've lost the sale. If they speak, they will get it. Okay, another, another type uh, of closing is just to set the appointment. Um, another way to look at this is actually the A-B close. And all that means is that you're giving them an option between yes, I'm going to get it, and yes, I'm going to get it. In other words, my guys are going to be here today and tomorrow. What time are you normally home? This, and they give you a time. Do you want to get it in tomorrow or the next day at this time? You give them an, an option between times. You set an appointment for an installer to come by at a particular time. Give them the option, and both options mean yes, they're going to get it. Again, when you ask for that, assume they're going to get it, and then be quiet once, once you've ask them and wait for them to respond. Um, another way to, to uh, close is called the Ben Franklin close. The thing about the Ben Franklin close is that, is that really this, a lot of times people when you're explaining things to them, if, they, if, if you're talking to them, sometimes it's just overwhelming. And so what helps is if you take, take a, a flyer and on the back there's some white space. And all you do is you simply turn the flyer over and you, you draw a T. On one side you put um, you know, reasons to get it and the other side is reason that, against it. So for and against. And the thing that I found is that you go, you go down, when you're going down this list, when it is obvious that the person should make this decision, but they just, I want to think about it, they'll say something like that. Or, um, I'm just not sure. It makes sense, but I need some time. Just say, okay, no problem. Turn over a flyer and say, let me leave you with this before, let me just go through this really quickly. Reasons to get it, and you can just start listing them off. Digital picture, uh, the DVR, you're going to save some money. And then you just start listing off the reasons to get it. And then over here you ask them, what would keep you from getting it? Now is there anything that, you, that would stop you? And they say, ah, I just want to think about it. Okay, so you want to think about it. Is there anything else? And then as you do this, what you've said, just they're seeing it, they're hearing it, it all makes sense and it helps the person become at peace with basically being closed. And so the Ben Franklin close, I've found that this works really well with, um, anyone over 50 years old. Uh, it, most of the time they, they're not used to being closed on the door. Just simply just sit down with them and show them that. Go through, go through the scenarios. And again, you're in a consultant mode. If it comes down to where they have a lot more things on this side that they're listing off to you, then you're going to understand their concerns even better. And you're going to go, you know, maybe you should stay with what you have. But most of the time, 99% of the time, there's always more reasons to get it versus not. And this at least allows them to, to measure this out. Just like the scale of concerns and benefits, it's basically all you're doing is presenting to them the scale right in front of their face. And when, and when you show them, if they, if they don't notice that the scales have tipped in your favor, they will after you do this close. Okay, and then um, let me also just touch on a, a couple more closes that I think are, are extremely important and probably the ones that I use more than any of them. But I just want, these are more principles, I think, than, than actually this is exactly what you say. Again, I'm going to reiterate it. You need to assume that they're going to buy. When you ask a question, have confidence enough to be quiet after you've asked the question and then listen for whatever concerns they may give or they may say, okay, I'll try it. Make sure that you're setting an appointment. Use the A, B. Each of those mean yes or yes. Give them an option between yes, I want to get it or yes, I want to get it. Those are the options you're giving them because you're assuming they want to. And then if you need to help a person see how the scales are tipping in favor of getting the satellite dish, use the Ben Franklin system for making a decision. Now, with all of that said, I'd like to show you a few of the closes that I used all of the time. One, every time I use this, this is basically the laminate close. And the way this works is you have a, uh, with the laminate, a lot of people, they, they explain the promotion incorrectly. It's not that they don't, not that the customer doesn't understand. They're doing a great job, job educating the customer, but they're not engaging the customer and making sure that as much as you're speaking, you're getting the spotlight back on the customer, which is what you want to do. And the way this works is you just turn this to them and say, again, the reason I ask 
is we've got a great promotion where you get the satellite dish for free, the installation's free, uh, and this is how it works. When you say this is how it works, then you take them to, this, to the laminate, and basically you want to, to make a triangle between your, your head, the laminate, and theirs, almost the exact same distance so that they're seeing and hearing what you're saying. And so what you do is you just, you have the customer right here. Normally I, instead of being across from them, I want to be on their team. And so I will actually step over shoulder to shoulder with them and, and read this together with them just like that. And so when I, when I talk to them, I say basically the way this works is you pay $49.99 up front, but then this gets credited to your bill. So it's basically paying $50 of programming in advance. Does that make sense? That is a close because you're, because you're engaging the customer, you're making sure that they're paying attention, and it's assumptive. You're assuming that it's gonna make sense to them that, they're, that this is gonna pay for $50 of their billing eventually. So you're gonna say, does that make sense? Another thing that that does is I've noticed that when I start showing people this, if they are not following in their mind what you're, what you're talking about, I'll say, does that make sense? And they'll go, oh, I'm sorry, what was that again? And then you start over, and that time you have their complete undivided attention. So it's so important that every time you explain a principle here, that you follow that up with a close. Does that make sense? Yes, you got another yes out of them, and it's um, engaging the customer. Okay, then you come in here, and then you also get the number of TVs that are right for you. At this point, you already know how many TVs the person has, but you want to reiterate it. If they say they have three TVs, then you say, and you said you had three TVs, right? They go, yes, that's right, I have three TVs. And what's really being, um, uh, communicated there is, yes, I, under I have three TVs. Yes, I understand that you're going to hook up three TVs. Yes, I understand that I'm going to have a satellite dish hooked up to three TVs. All of that is, assu is assumed in that with the assumptive close there. And then also you get here, and then you also get the equipment that's right for you with the DVR. And then normally in the, in the presentation, you've already, they've made that decision. And I say, normally, people put the DVR on their main television. Which TV would you like it on? Or which TV would you normally put it on? assuming that they're going to get it at that point they go well even if they didn't want to get it and they're going to give you a no they're trying to tell you no one of the five no's that you need they're going to say something along the lines of well if i got it i would put it on this tv or they're going to say yeah we probably put it on the main tv depending on that question you're going to be able to read engage where that person is on the interest level and how you're doing educating them and closing it's a great question to ask, so be fearless in it. Assume they want to get it, and in that assumption, just say, great, now the DVR, normally you put that on your main TV. Which TV do you think you'd put it on? And if they say, oh, we'll put it on the, on the main TV, you've already got the cell right there. And, and so, and then you ask them, and then you get down to this, and then you also get a free professional installation. And then, this is the greatest part, one of the major concerns of filling out the paperwork is that, uh, is that you, need to, you need to acquire the credit card and social security number. Now, if you ask for these correctly, then they actually become additional closes and an advantage to you instead of a disadvantage. The way this works is if you come here and say, okay, the only thing you have to have to qualify is a credit card that has at least one dollar worth of room on it. Is that a problem? Asking if that's a problem gives them an opportunity to tell you no, which they've been waiting to do, it's one of, <laughs> you can even count it towards your five no's in a way, but no, that's not a problem. Okay, great. And what they're saying is, is, no, I have a credit card. It's not a problem. I have a credit card that has at least a dollar worth of room on it, and I understand that you're going to ask for it later on when you fill out the paperwork. It's very important that you ask for it in that manner. Let me do that again. In order to qualify, you have to have a credit card that has at least one dollar worth of room on it. Is that a problem? Silent close. And then they say, no, that's not a problem. Or they're going to say, well, why do you need that? Well, they need to have a credit card. If you have a credit card that has at least $1 worth of room on it, then you qualify. Oh, okay, I've got that. Great. And then they also ask for a social. I do not say social security number. I just say social. Then they also ask for a social to verify that you've never had satellite TV before and you've never had dish before, have you? No, I haven't had dish before. Yes, I understand you're going to ask for my social later on. Yes, I understand that um, I need it to qualify to get it. All of those things are answered in that one question. Okay, so let me just um, run through the closes really quick again with the laminate close. I cannot stress how important this is, but again, I'm just going to go through it really quickly. The way this works is you pay $49.99 up front. This gets credited to your first bill. 
Does that make sense? Yes. Okay, good. And they also have hookup up to four TVs. You, see, you said you had three TVs. Is that correct? Yes. Okay, good. Then they also give you the DVR if you'd like. Normally people put that on their main TV. Um, which TV would you want it on? Well, if we got it, we'd put it on this TV. Great. Then they also give you free installation. And then the only thing you have to have to qualify is a credit card that has at least one dollar worth of room on it. Is that a problem? No, it's not. Great. Okay. And then they also ask for a social to verify that you've never had Dish before. And you've never had Dish Network before, have you? No, I haven't. Okay. Now, all of those, you've just went through about five closes. Like I said, 20% of sales are made before, um, with only having to make less than five sales, one to four sales. 80% of sales are made when a person has been closed or a closing attempt has been made at least five times. If that's the case, you have just, by going through the laminate in, the, in this manner, taken five closes out of the way right there. If you ignore those closing attempts and just explain that promotion, you still are, are basically have a 20% chance of closing them. If you want the other 80%, then use the closes that I just demonstrated. Okay, now what about after that? They say, no, it's not a problem. Um, you've never been with Dish Network before? No, I haven't, okay. And then, and then this is a close that I use, it's, it's assumptive, it also has silent closes in it, and it has a lot of A, B, or setting appointment closes. And what, the way it works, it's a three-stage three close. It becomes a little bit more uh, firm in the close as it goes along. And the way it works is, it starts with, I say, my guys. I just, my guys are going to be here today, tomorrow, and the next day. So today, tomorrow, and the next day, to, just to make it easy. Okay, my guys are going to be here today, tomorrow, and the next day. What time are you normally home? And you ask for a time, okay? So my guys, today, tomorrow, and the next day, what time are you normally home? The reason I ask for this is they understand that you're asking for an appointment for an installer to come by. And you're assuming that they're going to say yes. Now, normally what happens is they might give you a time because it's such a soft close. You're not asking, you're not actually saying the words, my installers are coming by tomorrow and the next day, when can they come by and install it? You're asking for a time that they're normally home. And it's easier for them. It eases them into making that decision. Great. So they give you a time. I'm home about 3.30. Okay. Then the second part of this close. Let me start with that second part. So if I, so you want to, so if you're, it's, you're assuming again. So if I had an installer, this is the first time I've used the word installer versus guys. So if I had an installer come by tomorrow or the next day, tomorrow or the next day, about 3.30, would that be all right with you? Now normally what's going to happen is they're going to say yes to this or they're going to say, well, I don't know if I want to get it yet. What about this? And then they're going to give you another concern. And then you overcome that concern. But let me start with this yes. If they say yes to this, then I say, okay, tomorrow or the next day, the third one. This is when it becomes a solid A, B close. You're giving them the option between yes and yes, and it's firm. Okay, okay, tomorrow or the next day. And then they're going to say, um, tomorrow's fine. Okay, and then at that point, you have your, your, your binder with the laminate. And at that point, all you do is you go, okay, great, slide that back, and you fill out the time, and say, and what was your first name? And again, you use the, you're assuming again, they're going to get it, and you're using silent closes throughout the whole thing. Every time you ask a question to fill out this paperwork, you are using silent closes every single time, which gives you another opportunity to close the person another 10 to 12 times just in filling out the contract. So as you're filling out the agreement, every time you ask a question, it's assumptive. The person is starting to accept the fact more and more that they're going to get it, and it just becomes an easy decision. And so, and what was your first name again? Okay, and you start to fill it out. Your address, the city, the phone number, and so forth. And you said you wanted the 522, and which room did you want that on? Okay, and then you put that in the notes. And then which programming did you want? You just start to, to fill out the contract, and all of these are assumptive closes, okay? Um, now... What happens if the person says, so if I had an installer come by tomorrow about 3.30, uh, would that be okay? Normally, they, har they hardly ever say, no, I don't want to get it, ever. Almost never. They, they almost always say, what about this? And then they ask another question. 
that you have an opportunity to educate the customer more and then to ask a, the close again. And so, and then when you answer that question, like they say, well, does this thing, I heard these things go out in bad weather, is that true? At that point, you can say, well, actually, you, you again, take that concern from that side of the scale, the key concerns. That's one of the biggest reasons people get a satellite dish. Is, and then you move it over to the other side of the thing and you say, now, one thing I can do is get you a great installer. Would it help if I got you a good installer to make sure that it didn't go out in bad weather? That would be great. That's a close. Would it? Because you're, again, assuming that they're going to get it. Would it help if I got an installer that was going to make sure that, that it didn't go out in bad weather? Yeah, that would be great. They just said yes to the sell again. So you say, okay, let me make sure and get him. And then, you, and then you go right back to this. So would 330 work for you? You go right back to the question you just asked. And then they're going to say, yeah, that would work after you overcame the concern. And then again, you say, okay, tomorrow or the next day and get the firm appointment. That is a very powerful close. It takes a lot of practice to kind of get down, you know, my guys are going to be here today, tomorrow, and the next day. What time are you normally home? They gave you the time. So if I had an installer come by about that time, would that be all right with you? Yes. Okay. Tomorrow or the next day, and you ask for the appointment. It's, if you practice that, this needs to become more comfortable for you and more smooth than even the contacting section of, do you live here? Do you have cable? Do you watch it? Have you ever heard of a dish before or something like that? You have to get better at this than that. This gets you paid. So understand that, that this is extremely important. Use the laminate, and this is another one. Now, this is a close that I use quite a bit, but I will say that there's, there's another one that I use all the time. It's much easier and something that I think that you could do at any point. And, the, and let me just explain the principles behind this first. We've already talked about this. If this is the customer, this is their fear right here. Here's their desire for gain. As you've done your part to either chip away at this or move it over here or to increase the desire so that they can see over the fear, as you get to that point, you want to, to again, touching on that you know that everyone is, is motivated by these things. At this point, you want to say, why don't you give it a try? Why don't you give it a try? You have nothing nothing to lose. In other words, try it out. It's really not that big of a decision. You have nothing to lose. You are in effect taking the fear completely out of there. You're erasing the fear. And they go, you know, I don't have anything to lose. Why don't I try it? Make sure that you say, do you, want, you, don't, you don't say, do you want to change? Do you want to change? You have nothing to lose. Think about it when, a, when you, you can imagine a couple in your mind and I've noticed that if I say, do you want to change from switch to cable to dish? And they go, the spouses will look at each other. I don't know, honey, do you want to change? No, they don't. They, no one wants to change. Do you want to give it a try? I don't know, honey, do you want to try it out? I mean, think about it. That's exactly what happens when, when it comes down to the customers um, talking to each other, the spouses. So I say, do you want to give it a try? You have nothing to lose. And even if you didn't do a very good job, of, of getting their desire for the product up, the desire could be remain small, but if there's nothing obstructing their view, then they're gonna make a decision on that, okay? Now, so that's another one. Do you wanna give it a try? You have nothing to lose. So you may get to the end of that, then you also have, uh, they also ask for a social to verify you've never had a dish before, uh, and you've never had a dish before, have you? No, I haven't. Well, do you wanna give it a try? You have nothing to lose. Oh, and normally what happens, oh, what about this? And then you overcome that concern. Do you want to try it out? Well, what about this? And then they're going to give you another concern. You overcome it. Do you want to give it a try? You can keep going back to that exact same, that exact same close using the silent principle every time. Do you want to give it a try? Do you want to give it a try? Overcome a concern. Do you want to give it a try? And after a while, they're like, oh, sure, I'll try it out. Great. What was your name? And you start to fill out the contract. Now, another, another technique that, that you can use as well is basically instead of, do you want to give that a try, just say, how does that sound? How does that sound? This is, this is kind of assumptive, but you can say, how does that sound, or um, does that sound pretty good? In fact, that is probably a little bit better. When you say, does that sound pretty good? You're assuming that they, they think it sounds good, but how does that sound? Well, that sounds pretty good. This is a very good way. This actually is a great bridge between the two uh, closes. For example, uh, 
They also ask for a social to verify you never had dish before. You never had dish before, have you? No. Well, how does this sound? Just to, just to gauge where their interest level is. If, if you've had a hard time reading them throughout the closes of the laminate, how does that sound? Or does that sound pretty good? One of those two things. How does that sound? Or does that sound pretty good? Yeah, that sounds pretty good. Okay. Well, do you want to give it a try? You have nothing to lose. It's a great way to, to kind of soothe the person into that, that final close. Okay. Now, let me also touch on one thing, and this is the tentative close. This is a very powerful close because it, it, it helps you overcome some of the most major concerns, or most common concerns, I should say, in spouse approval and think about it. We've talked about this in resolving concerns, but I'm going to go over it again. The reason I'm going to go over this is because there is a lot of people have not understood what the tentative close is. They think it's that a tentative close means that they can have tentative sales. And it's, you shouldn't do that. In other words, if I talk to a person, they give me a concern, and I say, they say, you know, I really need to talk to my spouse. What do you think he'd say? Oh, he'll probably say yes, but I still need to talk to him. Great. Um, normally what I do is I set up an appointment for an installer to come by like tomorrow or the next day. And if you can think of any reason in the world not to get it, then you just give me a call. Would that be okay? Or if he can think of any reason why he wouldn't want to get a DVR and, and save money, then just give me a call on my cell phone. Is that all right? That's the close. If you can think of any reason why you wouldn't want to get a DVR and save money, then you just give me a call on my cell phone. Is that okay? And then, again, be quiet. Then they're going to say, well, I guess that's fine. Or they're going to say, I don't know. And you go, well, like I said, just try, just let me set a tentative appointment. In other words, they see that they have an out. But that does not mean that it's okay for you to set that appointment tentatively and have the person telling you as you're walking out the door, okay, this is, I'm not getting this, right? Oh, that's right. And then you walk away patting yourself on the back for getting a claim ID number that never gets installed. That is not the point. The point is, is that you, you make the decision easier for them. They see, again, if we were to take a look at that, they see that fear. The fear is still there. And so what you're trying to do is the desires over here, they're still afraid. And so when you say, well, why don't you just set an appointment tentatively? And if you can think of any reason why you wouldn't want to get this, then, then uh, just give me a call on my cell phone. Basically, what you're doing is you're saying, look, there's very little to fear here. Very little. They're like, okay, I can go that far. And then as you, as you start to fill out the contract, what happens is they start to ask more in-depth questions. They start to look at the binder. They start to look at the, the uh, channels that are on there. And they start to become more and more comfortable with this. And even the little bit of fear that they have eventually evaporates. And sometimes, if you're doing your job right, the desire keeps on increasing. And then at the end of that, at the end of filling out that paperwork, then when you call in to get a claim ID, a way to firm up a tentative sale is if you're on the phone, you, t you tell the person on the other end of the phone, uh, their credit card number is this, their social is this, and then just say, real quickly, you, t you pull the phone back and go, um, that $49.99, do you just want us to put it on this card? You have them on the phone, the person sees that and he goes, yeah, just go ahead and put it on the card. Most of the time, the person will go, go ahead, and that sale just became solid. You just collected a $50 activation fee that is no longer a tentative sale. Okay? It was just a tentative close to help that person get closer and closer to the ultimate and firm, yes, I'm going to get it. You're taking them down a path similar to the contacting. You're taking them down the path that leads to the ultimate close. And if they want to get off that path, make sure that you do a tentative close, which gets them back on the path that leads to the ultimate close, if that makes sense. And so you're not saying, I'm just, I just want to get a sale for the sake of getting a claim ID. That's not it. It's, it's an ability to get someone into the habit of saying, okay, this is easy. This is an easy decision. And so just make sure that you're not taking advantage of the, the tentative close in the wrong way. In, in other words, just to get a sell for the sell's sake. Also, if you get to the end of the close and, and you, say, you ask for that, you say, hey, would you want to put that $49.99 on this card? And they say, oh, I just thought this was tentative. Don't freak out about it. Go, oh, it is. That's fine. I just wanted to ask. And then you start to fill it out. And then and you're like, okay, well, we'll see you tomorrow. And they go, well, if I don't, don't call you. Now, you have an obligation to your installer at that point to say, look, this one, this job right here, they may cancel, just so you know. I'll let you know, though, and you have an obligation to do that. But most of the time, 80% of the time, 
they don't cancel, and it's, it's just as strong as any one of the other closes if it's done right. Remember the difference between a tentative close and a tentative sale.